Of Ministries. I'm your host today, Mana Fisikar. Today, we'll be looking at the rapture, whether we as the church, the body of the church, will be going through the tribulation, or whether we will be raptured before the tribulation. And after we have lifted up prayers for the nation, we'll look into this subject. Welcome to Beatsap Ministry, the hour of prayer. And as usual, this week we start with Israel. And for everyone who's watching, that you may receive a blessing, we ask you to pray for Israel as commanded in the Torah. Said, I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. So in blessing Israel, you also receive a blessing. O righteous Father, we come before you once more. Thank you for crying us through the week that we may live and see your goodness days that you have created for every day O oh righteous father your mercies are renewed upon the earth and we we rejoice in your goodness that you feed us and clothe us and you make us O oh righteous father to live in your sight and now O oh righteous father we come before your throne of grace to lift up Israel and we ask you righteous father to bless them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet we ask you righteous father to keep them from the will of their enemies and let them triumph in righteousness over all that come against them. O righteous Father, we ask you, righteous Father, to let the land bring forth food abundantly and that they may dwell in peace, trusting in you always. We also turn our eyes unto the nation of Syria who suffered a chemical attack. We ask you to send comfort to those who, righteous Father, who are grieving because of this chemical, chemical attack. O righteous Father, as we move deeper and deeper into the day of the Lord, and things get worse and worse. Our eyes are fixed upon thee, O Ratas Father, who is our mainstay. In you, O Ratas Father, we find refuge under your wings. We ask you, Ratas Father, to deliver us from this day, that we may rejoice at your coming, O Ratas Father. We will want to rejoice. So, O Ratas Father, we ask you to cause us to walk in holiness and righteousness before you all the rest of our life, O Ratas Father, that, that we may dwell in your sight, O Ratas Father. We pray also for the nation of Iraq that are going through conflict and war. We pray for the nation of Australia that has suffered great flood. We pray for the nation of Brazil that has suffered great flood. We pray for the nations, O oh, Ratas Father, that have suffered floods. And we also lift up the nation of Sudan that is suffering famine and hunger. O oh, Ratas Father, these are the terrible times that we're entering into, Ratas Father. War is decreed on the face of the earth. But, O oh, Ratas Father, under your shadow of your wings we seek our refuge, O oh, Ratas Father, until this day of ad adversity we pass over. We pray, O oh, Ratas Father, the nation of Brazil, that peace may come to the land and that the drug war finish and that peace comes. We pray for the nation of Jamaica. We pray for all the nations, O oh, Ratas Father. We lift up the nation of Vietnam, O oh, Ratas Father, and ask them to be. Join unto you, Ratas Father, in one accord that they may come and worship and glorify your name. We lift up the nation of Mexico, Ratas Father, and also suffering great drugs war, O Ratas Father. We ask you to deliver them from the, their plague of war of drugs, O Ratas Father. And we lift up all the nations upon the face of the earth, and we ask you to turn our hearts to serve you with one accord. There's a special request today as we pray for Marco. We ask everyone who is watching this video, and who will watch this live, live stream video that you will say a prayer for Marcos who is suffering from some disease 
of the blood and of his body. We know not what disease it is, but we ask us righteous Father, you know all things, that you intercede in his life, and you deliver him from this, and cause his heart to turn unto you with one consent, that he may turn away from every evil and every way that is unright before your eyes, and let him know that in righteousness he shall find you, and in holiness he shall abide with you, and that in you, O righteous Father, is the, who is our healer, we might find the light of life. We thank you, O righteous Father, that you send your only begotten Son, that he, choose death, has delivered us from death, that we may live before you. And as this word, O righteous Father, is going out, O righteous Father, we ask you to I place it in your hands, O righteous Father, for you to multiply it. We ask you, O righteous Father, to bless it and cause it to bear fruit and to spring forth all over the earth as a testimony that this is your word. O righteous Father, we thank you in the mighty name of the name that is about every name, Mashiach, Yeshua, HaMashiach, we call Jesus Christ. We bless your holy name. Welcome, everyone, to uh, our live stream again. And we thank you that um, God is able to do all things. And when we put our trust in him, he delivers us from the evil one and from the works of the enemy. And we bind every enemy and every, every evil spirit that come against us this night. That the word may we speak without fear or without recompense from the enemy. But that our God Almighty is able to cause his word to go through freely over the internet and wherever he would like it to prosper. All right, us God, we thank you. For your goodness and your mercy we thank you for your praise now we're going to look um the church will the church be raptured before the tribulation this is the question we're asking tonight and our righteous father from your word we'll find the answer may you lead us in the light of your word that we may do things that's pleasing in your sight we want our righteous father that Your will be done in this place tonight, and we are trying to magnify your word in truth. We know that all things are done by your power. We cannot do it no other way. So, righteous Father, here we go. We dive into your word. Be with us and guide us with your Ruach Kadesh, your Holy Spirit. Amen. I will start today's teaching with the understanding that there are many believers who hold the view that God would never let us go through the tribulation because God has not appointed us to wrath. And we have watched many videos and movies over the years that come from Hollywood that, that, that back up this view that we shall not go through the wrath, that, that we be somehow um, lifted out of the earth before the great tribulation start, and that those who are left behind are those who did not believe and those who did not turn unto God. But is this the real truth of the Bible? Is this what the Bible teach? This is why we ask you to follow us as we explore the Word of God. And if you find at the end of this video that what you've been taught is error, then join us, subscribe to us as we go for truth. For this is Be Zav, the home of gold. And I agree, first off, that we are not appointed unto wrath, the wrath of God. But to salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. But being saved in Christ and being, ex and being excluded from the wrath of God, does it then follow that we are exempt from participating in the tribulation? On the contrary, many believers will be in the tribulation. Because those who believe that we who are Christians or we who are in Christ will not go through the tribulation are preparing themselves and their followers for a nasty surprise and is in danger of causing them to be overcome in the time of tribulation by unbelief. Because if they are taught that they will be raptured before the tribulation, then if they find themselves in the midst of it, 
with the enemy telling them that Jesus have abandoned them, then they will fall into unbelief and be taken by the wicked one. And I wish that will not happen to no believers. So it's rather and it's best that you teach your people that they will go through tribulation and praise God, if God take them out before, then at least they were prepared. But don't leave your flock unprepared. Don't leave them open to attack in a time of oppression. But now, what does the Bible say about the saints going through the revelation, the tribulation? What does the Bible say about the saints going through the tribulation? If we go to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 30, this is Moses prophesying unto the children of Israel and telling them what to do in the latter days when they enter into tribulation. Let's read. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou wilt turn to the Lord thy God, and shall be obedient to his voice, here we find Moses telling the saints what to do in the latter days when they are in tribulation. And we know that God is not a God who respects man. Plus, we must remember that Israel is inscribed on the palms of God's hands and that they are the apple of his eyes yet he allowed them to go to tribulation what then about us who are Christians in Christ are we going to be raptured out of the tribulation but Christ is going to leave his brethren the Jews into the tribulation is this what we believe God forbid we who are engrafted into the, the tree of Israel, should we be taken out and the children of Israel be left behind? God forbid. If Israel must go through the tribulation, then I want to go through it with them. For we are one in Christ. I don't want to be separated from my brethren in Christ. If they are going through trouble, I want to go through trouble with them. We have to consider our theology. How can we create a theology where we are extracted from the tribulation, but yet we place the 144,000 Jews in the midst of it? Where is the love for our brethren? Where is the love for our fellow believers in God? I don't understand this theology. If Jesus said to us that we should be faithful unto death and he would give us a crown of life, how would that happen if we are raptured? And why did he not rapture the six million Jews that Hitler killed? Moreover, some might say, but they didn't believe in Jesus. Well, why didn't he rapture Stephen when he was being stoned? Or Paul, who wrote all those books in the Bible, when he was being killed, why didn't he rapture him when he was being killed or put in prison or being beaten? Why didn't Jesus rapture the millions of Christians who were burned at the stake? And all of the apostles got killed, but for one, and that's John. Where was the rapture then, is my question. Are they less believers than us? Are they less loved than us? Behold, Jesus himself said in John chapter 16, verse 33, These things are spoken unto you that ye might have peace in the world, he shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And Paul said in Acts 14, verse 22, Confirm the soul of the disciple and exalt them to continue in the faith that we must through tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. So it's through tribulation some of us will enter. 
And again, our Lord says, Fear not none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into the prison, that he may be tried. And he shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee a crown of life. Revelation 2.10 and Revelation 2.11 he that had an hear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. He that overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Do you hear what our Lord and Savior said to the churches? Are you holding up your pastor's word above your Lord? He that said unto us that we shall suffer tribulation, whether it's been the early church or the church in general. But we should be faithful unto death, and he will give us a crown of life. Shall he then rapture us when he already gave us a command what to do in the time of tribulation? Should we take cast his, his words aside and hold on to that which the pastor teach you? Is this your serving of your Lord? He said, learn of me, for I am meek and mild. Learn of him who told us, be faithful unto death, and he will give us a crown of life, and we will not be hurt by the second death. Do you know who will not be hurt by the second death? If we go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Let's read. And I saw the throne of day that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had he had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So if these people were raptured, they couldn't get to live and reign with Christ. In fact, they had to die. And they were faithful unto that. And as our Lord said, he gave them a crown of life. And the second death had no power over them. This is the truth of what's coming. So if you get raptured, you might be in danger of the second death. Because only those who die in the tribulation for the word of God and Jesus are exempt from the power of the second death according to the word of God. So be careful what you wish for. Revelation chapter 13, chapter 7, sorry. Revelation chapter 7, verse 13, reading to 17. Now, hear the word of our Lord again. And this is one of the elders speaking to John. And question, John asking John a question. And one of the elders answered and said unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robe, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them, and they shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst any more, neither shall the sun light upon them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away the tears from their eyes. You see, those got beheaded, they avoided the second death, and these also came to great tribulation. So both sets of people, believers, even those who were in Christ, came to great tribulation. So then why would God let Peter get murdered and go through tribulation and Paul and these people in heaven and the, the people who avoided the second the, the death, why would they all let them go through tribulation and we who are such sinners shouldn't be raptured out of it? Be careful what you wish for. Listen to the word of your Lord and not your pastor. Understand what the word of God says and not one man says.
Now let's read some of the scriptures which give us a blow by blow account of the end times events. Matthew 24, verse 14 to 22. And his apostle, and the apostle of the king, sorry, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When he therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, who must read it, let him understand. Then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains, and let them which is on the house top not come down or take anything out of his house. Reading from Matthew twenty-four eighteen to 22. Neither let, them, let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray he that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath days. For then they shall be great tribulation, such as not seen since the beginning of the world to this time. No nor shall ever be and except those days should be shortened they shall no flesh be saved but for the elect day for but for the elect sake those days shall be shortened so we find jesus telling his followers what is going to happen in the last days just before he comes so the first things to note is that he's speaking to believers and he's warning them what to do in the end times that would be fruitful if he was going to take them out of the tribulation and if he's going to take them away why would God cut short the days of the tribulation for the elect's sake you remember we just read the scripture there was such tribulation or such tribulation that God had to cut short the days Otherwise, no flesh shall be saved. But for the elect's sake, God shot, cut short the days. Listen, if we were going to be raptured out of the earth, the body of church, elect, well, why does God need to cut short the days? Let it go. Let all the people who were left upon earth be destroyed. Why would God want to cut short the days and use the word elect? Think about it. Why would he use the word elect? For the elect's sake, if all the elect is raptured. Listen, we are no better than that who went before us. We have to prepare our minds to go through the tribulation. Praise God if we don't go through it. But if you are not prepared, you will be, be caught unaware and you will lose that which you seek to hold on to. And that is your salvation. Would God not just intensify, intensify the tribulation to get rid of all the wicked ones who did not believe because this is a time of judgment? So here we see in Matthew 24, judgment is falling out, tribulation is on the earth. If God is going to rapture us, why don't he just let the wicked perish? Why would he cut the short days? Again, the question is posed to you. Seek the truth always. Be at Zav Ministry. Seek to tell the truth at all times. But on the contrary, we as believers should note that God cut the days short. That the elect might be saved. In the Bible, there are only two comings of Christ. In Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, his first coming and promise of his second coming are told in their writings for Jesus is to come and take take us into a secret rapture and then return with, with us later he would have to come three times not two and there is no scripture would speak of a third coming the people who try to fit the scriptures to establish a theory that they have in their mind have to invent a third coming to fit their theory but the scripture says in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28 so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto him that look for him shall he appear the second time without sins unto salvation it is imperative 
we stick to the scripture and not deviate in turning to our own understanding. If we go back to Matthew chapter 24, 29 to 31, it says, and hear the text, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from the heavens, and the power of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in the heavens, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angel with a great sound of a trump, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven unto the other. If this Bible is talking about the rapture, this text, sorry, then you can plainly see that God, Son, is gathering his elect after the tribulation. And if he's talking about gathering the children of Israel, as some people believe, still he's gathering his elect after the tribulation. Not before. Not before. He's not gathering his elect before, but after. Because he said, for you who okay so some people say because Jesus says you have to watch for you know not when your master come for if the good man of the house know when the thief would come then he would have watched and not suffered his house to be taken yes he told us to watch but why the reason he told us to watch is because he left sign for us to look out for that we might know when he's coming for Paul said, as said, we as children of the day will not be overtaken by his coming. If you go to um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1, reading to 6. But the times and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travaileth upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But listen to the text. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober because we are elected and we are sanctified and we are justified we be looking for our Lord and Savior to come and will not give heed unto the world to turn their back into but because we have been chosen out of the world we will be looking for the signs of what our Lord said would happen in these days and then we will be not be caught unawares but those who are not looking our Lord will come upon them as a thief in the night and will catch them unawares if you say you might be catch caught unawares then you're saying you're not watching you're not observing the words of our Lord again Paul taught us in Thessalonians Titus sorry in Titus 2 verse 12 to 13 teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope the glorious appearing of the great god and our savior jesus christ our lord told us what to look for in matthew 24. matthew 24 verse 32 reading to 36 now learn the parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaf, ye know that summer is nigh. So he likewise, when he shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be full. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of the day and the hour, no man know it. No, not the angels in heaven, but my father. Yes, no one know when, when our Lord will come back, or the day, or the hour. 
but we still need to watch. But the season and the year and the season, we, we will know. It's, I'll put it to you like a layman terms that way we can all understand. It's, it's like you have a father who is going on a trip and he's going back. He said, I'll be coming back in 10 months. In the month of October, November, and but he doesn't tell you the day, he doesn't tell you the time. All he tells you is coming back in November. And he said, When I come back, I want you to be ready to go out with me. So be ready when I come back. Now, all the time you know your Lord is coming back. You're watching for the signs. And as soon as you come into November, you're preparing yourself because you're in you're, the sign that he's told you to watch for, you're not observing. So you don't know what hour is coming. So you're always ready when it goes into that season, that November. So now, same like our Lord and Savior says, we should watch for the sign so that when we go into the season of the signs being fulfilled, we can be ready and not be caught by his coming. But we shall rejoice to his coming because we see we've been waiting for our Lord to come. So are you watching? Are you waiting? Are you looking for the signs? Or are you fall asleep and turn back into the world? What are you doing? Are you waiting for, I tell you, his coming is near. Is even at the doors. There is no secret rapture. It does not exist. In Matthew 24 40, reading to 42, then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what our, our Lord do come in. This scripture will be fulfilled at the second coming of our Lord and not the third. But we know, but we who look forward to his coming, shall, he shall appear without sin. Listen, if, as the scripture said, it's at his second coming and he will, people will start to disappear at his second coming and Matthew 24 tells us his second coming is after the great tribulation, then how can we be raptured before the tribulation? How is that possible? How does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. If we go to 1 Thessalonians 4.6, reading to 17, and it's telling you what will happen when our Lord come back. For the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout and the voice of an archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet him the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord here we find the word rapture came came from this text from which means caught up and that the point must of sorry and that the point most of us miss is what the scriptures say the scriptures say we shall be caught up in the air to meet him and so shall we ever be those who are raptured or caught up will not come back to earth check the scripture but the, the most poignant part of this text is this happens at the Lord's coming and the resurrection of the dead happens after the tribulation. Check your Bible. Revelation chapter 20 verse 11. So, if this caught up is happening at the, when the resurrection is happening, then my friends, everybody go through the tribulation. So if someone tells you that you will be raptured before the tribulation, it's a misconception, a misunderstanding of the scriptures. It's plain to see you can go back and check all the scriptures that was quoted in this video 
and you'll find what the word of God says our Lord says in John 15 verse 18 to 19 if the world hates you you know that he hated me before it hated you and he were of the world the world would love his own but because ye are not of this world but I have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hated you so you see when the scripture said in first Thessalonians that we'll be caught up with him and there shall we be in the air with him forever it's because we have been chosen out of this world by him and he also says I go to prepare a place for you and I'll come back and receive you unto myself or in my father's house there may be mentions and I go to prepare a place for you so he's taking us out of this world into his kingdom for he says my kingdom is not of this world for if it was my servant would fight for me again chapter John chapter 14 verse 1 to 4 let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe in me also in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am he may also be and where the I go he you know and the way I go so no secret rapture it's a make-believe some people said during the tribulation when 144,000 will be ministering and preaching while the rapture take place according to the word of God the 144,000 are people who were redeemed from the earth that means they died and was resurrected they were part of the first resurrection being part of the first fruit let's read the scripture Revelation let's read the scripture uh, and, and as for 144,000 preaching the gospel when the church is raptured well that's not so the 144,000 are Israelites who have been resurrected being the first who redeemed from the earth having their names of God in their foreheads so no secret rapture because when he comes all I shall see him that's, the, that's another point if Yeshua is going to do a secret rapture the Bible says all I shall see him when he returns how then is that a secret rapture consider how can it be a secret rapture if all eyes see him when he returns behold Revelation 1 17 he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierce him and all kindred of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen but he's coming soon our Lord is coming soon and your eyes and my eyes might see him coming in the clouds there is no secret what rapture I tell you the truth we are about to go into third world war we are about to face the tribulation we are even at the doors right now the emblems of fire are igniting all over the world we are in such a times that never been since the foundation of the world listen you better prepare your heart and your mind to face what's coming you're gonna need God the book of Isaiah says who shall abide the day of the Lord or who shall be saved by his coming they that have clean hands and pure hearts who have not lifted them eyes unto image imagine that not lifted up the eyes unto image be as they have ministry believe we should not have any image at all be it to have ministries say everyone who follow be it to have ministry do not have no image of Christ or no image of no religious icon so you see those who escape according to Isaiah have not lifted the eyes unto images in the book of Revelation Revelation those who are condemned are those who have lifted up their eyes unto idols the image of the beast choose who you will follow 
choose truth. Isaiah said, bread shall be given them, the waters shall be sure. Our eyes shall see the Lord in his beauty. Our heart shall meditate terror of his judgment. Ladies and gentlemen, we are BXAP Ministries. We do not believe in idols. We do not believe in images. We believe in the pure word of God. And we ask you to join us in this time of tribulation. For you're going to need a strong and a mighty and a sure word from God in these times. And here you'll find the truth is straightening you for what's to come. We are be itself ministries until we meet again next time bye bye